Hello YouTube. Um, I have been doing research of unidentified submersible objects and underwater humanoids, as well as cryptids, for many years. Some of you have read Russia's USO Secrets, uh, the book that I co-authored with Philip Mantel, and I continuously update my files. Today I want to present information about a German case. And the source of it is actually the, that Russian former military scientist and space exploration engineer that uh, releases fascinating information from time to time. Also, I want to introduce you to another but more famous Russian and world explorer, among other things, and his encounters with the paranormal phenomena in our oceans. And finally, a very interesting update about humanoids of the Caspian Sea. Please do see my channel playlist on the subject of underwater humanoid beings, because I covered Caspian Sea before. For a long time in the imagination of people, the oceans of the world were inhabited by various monsters, sea snakes. However, after human beings began to actively explore the sea, and the oceans, it became clear that monsters do not really get in the way of ships very often. And yet the um, undoubted charm of such legends awoke in us. Well, they did not allow the monsters to disappear into the abyss of history. Stories about fantastic creatures that allegedly sometimes still attack ships, yachts, and even battleships have taken their rightful place among other urban legends and especially strong interest is aroused by those that include submarines. They claim that mysterious sea creatures really do not like to be disturbed in their dark cold depths. One of the most famous reports about the alleged attack of a sea monster on a submarine dates back to the First World War. In those years, German submarines were all over the Atlantic, trying to create problems for their enemies. However, one of these submarines, which had the number UB-85, itself once encountered problems. And that encounter took place, I believe, on April 30, 1918. The story goes that this submarine was discovered on the surface by the British patrol boat Coriopsis. In those days, submarines were a fairly new and very dangerous weapon. They were invisible, deadly killers of naval vessels. So for the British, such a find was very successful. They immediately fired at the submarine and it began to sink, without trying to take revenge on the British in any way. The situation became even more strange when the British vessel approached the sinking boat and its crew quickly surrendered without any resistance. The British sailors were quite puzzled. Where has it been seen that an elusive submarine just waited until it was sunk and its crew was detained without any difficulties? It all looked stunningly strange. It was only when the Germans were brought aboard and the captain of the submarine Captain Günther Krach was interrogated that the reason for this behavior became more or less clear. Although it turned out to be very bizarre, Krach informed the British that the submarine surfaced at night in order to recharge the batteries. During this procedure, there was a strong splash from the port side when when the captain and other crew members decided to see what was going on there, an unknown creature suddenly jumped out of the cold dark water. The captain described it as a strange beast. The monster began to climb up the side of the ship and this led to the rocking of the ship. The beast was huge. It had a small head with large eyes set deep in a horned skull and a large mouth with sharp teeth that glittered in the moonlight. The crew members were afraid that the submarine would continue to tilt under the weight of the creature until the open hatch was in the sea. And so they started shooting at the mysterious attacking animal. However, 
this thing, this creature, refused to let go of the submarine. The intensity of the fire had to be increased, and only after, some time after that, the monster detached itself from the side of the submarine, and then it disappeared into the depths of the sea. His further fate, of course, is unknown. Well, checking the condition of the submarine showed that the plates of the front part of the hull were damaged, and the submarine could not dive underwater again. That's why the Germans were hanging hopelessly, helplessly on the surface. The crew of the boat, tired and scared, did not want to fight when the British vessel discovered them. And um, I guess the crew was almost grateful that their enemies saved them. Undoubtedly, this is a very mysterious and dramatic story. However, interestingly enough, the British official report on the UB-85 incident does not contain any information about the mysterious creature. It says, UB-85, the commander's Captain Krach, on April 30, she was sunk by the Coriopsis boat. The crew was removed before the boat sank. Um, several theories have been proposed as to why no monsters are mentioned in the report. One of the accounts is that the British Navy, perhaps for some reason, tried to hide the real circumstances of this incident. It is also possible that the British simply did not believe the nonsense of the German captain, or the message about the sea monsters was completely fabricated later. This story has very little real evidence to back it up, and indeed it is quite possible that this is but just another urban legend like a fair, just a fairy tale embellished over the years. While the veracity of the UB-85 story seems very doubtful, however, what is very surprising, this is not the only encounter of a sea monster and a submarine that took place during First World War. Cryptozoologist Bernard Evelsman, in one of his books, described the strange incident involving another German submarine, this time it was U-28 Schmidt that got into trouble. The former captain of this submarine wrote about this in 1933. If you believe his words, on July 30, 1915, U-28 Schmidt wandered in the waters of the Atlantic uh, at a place called Fastnet Rock. It is 60 nautical miles south of the coast of Ireland, and it came across the British steamer Iberian which was carrying a valuable cargo. There were mostly military trucks and jeeps. Seeing such a delicious target, the submarine immediately fired a torpedo at it, which made a huge hole in the side of the ship and led to its rapid flooding. The German submarine was granted with satisfaction and went about their war business. However, about 25 seconds after sinking of the steamer. A powerful explosion occurred underwater, which is believed to have been caused by some kind of explosive device on board of the submerged vessel. Or perhaps it was a boiler explosion. This huge explosion caused a colossal release of water, and with it the remains of a sunken ship flew up into the air. And uh, so some of the uh, fragments even damaged that U-28 Schmidt submarine. But here is what's weird. Among all this flying water and debris, there was something else torn from the dark depths. It was a giant reptile. The explosion was so strong that the sea monster was reportedly thrown 30 meters out of the water. And then it fell back into the sea. After that, it convulsed on the surface of the water for some time. The frightened crew of the submarine watched this display until the monster subsided and slowly sank into the water. Presumably it was dead. Eyewitnesses described it as a kind of huge crocodile having the length of about 20 meters. The monster's head had a mouth like that of a crocodile. The monster also had a pointed tail and four webbed paws. Giant crocodiles in the North Atlantic. So what was this strange sea creature? 
and perhaps even more importantly what was it doing um, at all in a very noisy area where there was fighting all around and how did it manage to be in the right place at the right time right above the sunken steamer at the moment when it exploded did such an incident actually happen with the participation of an unknown sea monster or is it again just a fairy tale an exaggeration woven into sea legends there is no evidence about this particular case except for the captain's own story as well as some additional reports submitted in subsequent years by other crew members present at the scene who are all dead by now and without live or living witnesses and without additional information we'll probably never know the truth so what conclusions can be drawn from all of the above the sea is undoubtedly the source of numerous myths legends and mysteries it gives rise to incomprehensible sometimes even very strange riddles perhaps one day we'll be able to solve one of them and we will finally be able to find some kind of answer that suits everyone well <clears throat> i found some answers about usos but that's in my book and in my videos but until we do find the answer that everybody likes we can only look at the vast blue expanses of the world ocean and wonder what's in it now let me add something here you can see my other videos about ancient russia that talks about this phenomenon i'll tell you but i'll repeat some here apparently the so-called crocodiles or crocodiles can also be attributed to russian domestic dragons according to the chronicles they these creatures lived in russian rivers in particular in the velikaya river which flows into the lake pskov um we we can assume that the real crocodilia so to say representatives of living semi-aquatic predators were found here according to the pskov third chronicle in the summer of 1790 or 1582 the beasts of the river were torn from the river and the way was closed they ate a lot of people and the people were terrified and prayed to god for all the lands and some were able to hide and some were beaten crocodiles were also found in other slavic rivers so in 1589 uh, the english diplomat jerome gorsey actually observed himself a dead crocodile on the bank of a certain river near warsaw uh, representatives of this type of dragons can also be found on the russian so-called splint uh, pictures and um, it's it's very interesting uh, to see now <clears throat> about the world explorer Fyodor Konyukov who is an amazing person he's a fearless traveler who managed to circumnavigate the world five times cross the Atlantic Ocean on a rowing boat climb the highest peaks of the world the unique achievements of this outstanding personality can be enumerated for a long time and we'll, we'll cover some uh, the 72 year old adventurer who is also a russian orthodox priest is no stranger to long perilous journeys he has climbed mount everest sailed around the world walked to the north and south poles and um, he also managed to um, row across the pacific ocean to queensland's sunshine coast he's a russian survivalist voyager aerial and marine explorer and artist in december 2010 he became an eastern orthodox priest and a deacon see konyhov like me is from the soviet ukraine he was born in the village of chkalovo and that's in the ukraine's zaporizhia oblast his father was a fisherman on the sea of azov a wonderful body of water if you ever have a chance to see it i had many years ago it's a small sea but very unusual and his grandfather actually had served in the same garrison as georgi sidov who was a famous russian arctic explorer supposedly they say konyhov attended a nautical school in odessa and another in leningrad and he became a specialist in polar navigation later he worked as a professional navigator and marine engineer 
he served three years in the Soviet Navy. Now, there is a very interesting report that he was stationed in the Kaliningrad guardhouse with the Baltic fleet when he volunteered for a two and a half year tour of duty as a Soviet Marine sailing across the um, South China Sea um, in the Special Forces unit delivering munitions to the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War. After his service in the Soviet Armed Forces, he left behind the terrible realities of war and completed a vocational art school, which enabled him to become a successful painter and sculptor too. So, when he sailed the oceans, he saw a few interesting things. So, Fyodor Konohov, Konohov spoke about the mysterious inhabitants of the oceans. So, what did he meet actually? What did he encounter? See, there are creatures that he had seen personally and he doesn't know, he doesn't doubt their existence at all. Back in 1998 in an interview with Russian newspaper he told about a strange encounter in the waters of the northern hemisphere of the globe. Fyodor Konyhov with his brother and two like-minded friends decided to sail to the Arctic. During this journey Konyhov noticed bathing or you know, uh, swimming girls with dark green hair. When they saw the boat, Konyhov's boat, approaching them, the girls dived under the water and did not show up again. Okay? This case is the first in Konyhov's career when he encountered something inexplicable. Whether they were mermaids or another kind of humanoid creatures living in the ocean, the traveler doesn't know. However, he was inclined to believe that they were mermaids. Then, in 2004, again in the Atlantic Ocean, Fyodor Konyhov literally encountered sea beasts, or sea monsters. These creatures had almost no hair on their heads. Eyes were like snakes, like serpentine eyes, with a vertical pupil, several rows of gill slits visible on the neck. But the most memorable thing was their shriek, which was so piercing that Konyhov almost fainted. According to the men, they were not mermaids, but sirens. During his travels, Fyodor learned to distinguish between them. Mermaids are timid creatures. You can meet them only if you notice them first. They don't make contact with people. When Konyhov was in Malta, he heard a legend that almost three and a half thousand years ago, people hunted mermaids en masse and destroyed them. Uh, there were even attempts to enslave them to mine pearls. After a bloody and brutal massacre, representatives of the aquatic civilization retreated from the coasts and since then have been trying not to catch people's eyes. By the way, Malta is a very interesting place when it comes to the paranormal. And look it up, and maybe one day I'll make a video about it. Now, sirens are cruel and vengeful creatures, according to the explorer. No one knows if they were like that initially, or became like that after the monstrous attitude from humans towards themselves, meaning towards the sirens. Opinions differ here. But one thing can be said, sirens are able to deafen a person with their cry, after which the humans drown. In total, during his travels, Fyodor Konyhov encountered sirens twice and mermaids much more, many more times. The second encounter with the danger, with dangerous creatures of the ocean took place in 2011. A terrible storm broke out, the traveler was in the open sea and he had nowhere to go. Trying to stay on the water afloat, he heard a rolling rumble. A huge wave was about to overtake Konyhov. Turning around, he saw that several women were chasing him among the waves. Because of the strong wind and the hum of the waves beating against each other, the cry of the sirens were almost impossible to make out. Most likely, the traveler believes they expected that his boat would capsize and then they would attack him. This did not happen. Fyodor Konyhov resisted the elements and creatures 
that wanted to profit from the traveler. 20 minutes later, the storm moved south, and with it, the sirens. Fyodor Konyukov shared his observations and impressions uh, with the Crimean researcher Anatoly Tavrysiski, who in his book pointed out the details that he learned from the world-famous traveler. In his opinion, Konyukov's fame came not because of various fables, but because of his desire for exciting adventures. Therefore, it would be foolish to suspect him of some kind of fiction, and he is far from being the only one who believes in the existence of an intelligent civilization um, at the bottom of the seas and oceans. And now let's move on to Kazakhstan. I want to read you, uh, this, this is a remark from someone who read the interview with Konyhov. In the city of Shevchenko, now Aktau in Kazakhstan, on the Mangishlak Peninsula of the Caspian Sea, he met a man who fed some underwater inhabitants with condensed milk and other products in tubes and sealed packages. He swam quite far and left his gifts there, somewhere in a special designated place under the water. About once a week, depending on the weather, he took back an empty container and left a new set of products. The commentator believes that intelligent that unintelligent beings would not be uh, smart enough to open an airtight uh, packaging um, and uh, boxes or containers and would not be smart enough to do so. The person who told this story mentioned that it was in that it took place in 1973 and that man worked at the time at the Mangishlak energy plant. Look up my videos about Kazakhstan, which in itself is a tremendous paranormal phenomenon, and of course about the humanoids of the Caspian Sea. I will again uh, put the uh, playlist in the description to this video. And I will continue my research, and if you like it, please support me through the links you will find in the description to this video. Please um, like my channel, please subscribe to it, and tell others. Thank you.